Okay, so we've now discussed the correct way of doing this Rothman assay, where you only put a physiological concentration of synaptobrevin into vesicle into liposome A. Okay, and we've seen that it no longer produces um, fusion of these two vesicles when you actually have physiological concentrations of the snare proteins. Okay, so that shows us that. In neurons, the snare proteins alone, what suggests at least, that in neurons, the snare proteins alone are not capable of fusing the synaptic vesicle with the plasma membrane. So here is a piece of evidence shooting down the clamp theory, basically. It says, no, you don't need a clamp protein. These core snare complexes, they're not ever going to fuse the membranes together, not in the physiological circumstances, basically. Okay, so that's all good. That's supporting the model that I've presented you in this video, where uh, the core snare complexes dock the vesicles at the membrane, but they don't cause them to fuse. Now, what we can now do is do more experiments. We can now put in synaptotagmin into this vesicle. Why not? Okay, and we can look to see if they fuse. So let's do that. Let's um, now say we've got a physiological concentration of synaptobrevin in this vesicle, so 70 of them. Sorry, a liposome. It's a liposome, not a vesicle. Uh, we've got a physiological concentration of synaptobrevin, and we now stick in our synaptotagmin. Okay. Well, will that cause fusion yet? Think about my model, Do, uh, the model that I presented you. It's not mine. I didn't come up with it. <laughs> um, what, do, will that be enough? No, because I've told you this needs to bind to lipids in here. So we need to have phosphatidylserine in uh, this vesicle here. Okay, so in this membrane, you're going to have to have phosphatidylserine. Now, I also told you about phosphatidylinositol 4,5-bisphosphate, uh, but later on I told you that the main one, the most important one, is phosphatidylserine, and indeed it is. So in this experiment, if you make a phospholipid bilayer that doesn't have uh, phosphatidylinositol 4,5-bisphosphate, uh, it's not going to be devastating as long as you put in phosphatidylserine. Okay, so let's say initially we put in this phosphatidylserine in here, and now we're doing the Rothman assay properly, i.e. with the physiological concentration of synaptobrevin. We've got our phosphatidylserine in this membrane, and let's say we match the concentration, oops, the density of phosphatidylserine in this membrane to the density that it would be found in the normal plasma membrane, and what you get is fusion, basically. You find that these two vesicles fuse, and you see that by uh, looking for the return of the fluorescence that occurs because quenching has been lost because the density of the fluorophore has gone down in the membrane again. Okay, now another interesting experiment that you can do is you can put phosphatidylserine in the membrane of the um, liposome A, basically, which is representing our synaptic vesicle. Now what happens here? Well, actually, it stops fusion. Why, then? Oh, and I should have said, of course, you also put in calcium. I always forget to add that. Uh, synaptotagmin, in order to activate it, you're going to obviously have to put calcium. The calcium will bind to the synaptotagmin. It will then bind to the phosphatidylserine, and it will fuse them together. I Sorry, I didn't mention that. I should have, obviously. Uh, now, what we're going to do is we're going to put phosphatidylserine in both membranes. We're going to add calcium and they're not going to fuse. Why? Or at least fusion will be greatly reduced. Why? Well, it's because the synaptotagmin molecule actually is capable of binding to the phosphatidylserine that's in the same uh, membrane as it, basically. So this C2A domain, which, remember, is the domain which binds to phosphatidylserine, is capable of binding to this phosphatidylserine that I've now put in the same membrane as the synaptotagmin is in. And that means it's not going to bind to this phosphatidylserine in the other uh, liposome membrane now. So you won't get the fusion of the liposomes, or at least you'll get hugely reduced fusion of the liposomes. So what you find, if you go back into the axon terminal, 
is that phosphatidylserine is not present in the membrane of the synaptic vesicles, which is nicely in support of what our model here predicted, basically. So this model is looking good, basically. All of the evidence appears to agree with it.